Hello and welcome back to the Second Chance Blue channel here on YouTube. I'm happy to see that you've decided to stop by to visit with me. Several days ago I appeared on a, a radio program where I shared my thoughts on the topic of being bullied and how to overcome being bullied. I shared my thoughts from a two-part article series that I wrote several weeks ago on the topic of being different and being bullied. Within the second part of being different and being bullied, I include a link, list of links to different articles that I've written over the past four and a half years. The articles contain information that have helped me to overcome being bullied and believing that I deserve to be bullied, which is a distorted perception. But for many years, I believed that I didn't just make mistakes, but that I was a mistake. And consequently, I believed I, I, I deserved to be bullied because I was a mistake, but through my recovery process and through the understanding that I gained through uh, seeking solutions, I've been able to overcome a lot of the distorted perceptions and the beliefs that I once maintained that led me to believe that I deserved to be bullied. Yesterday I shared my three-part article on who am I. I talked about boundaries in that particular video. Uh, presentation. Today I'm going to share the first part of an article series that I wrote on traumatic brain injury and the identified patient. In order to do that I need to put my glasses back on. I appreciate you listening and as you listen you have questions please let me know. I look forward to hearing from you my friend. Here we go with the reading of the article. Traumatic brain injury and the identified patient part one. Hi, and welcome back to Second Chance to Live. I'm sorry I have not been writing more recently. I've been preoccupied with taking care of some other business for Second Chance to Live. Though I've been distracted and I believe I have clarity, I want to share a concept with you that I've learned studying family systems theory. The information has enriched my life tremendously. First of all, let me say that I do not believe that there is any va added value in pointing the finger in anyone's direction. As an adult, I am responsible to and for my decisions, my choices, and myself. What I have learned through my recovery process has empowered and continues to empower my ability to pursue my unique creativity. That being said, in families where there is conflict, secrets, or unresolved emotional uh, pain, different members of the nuclear family are assigned or assume different roles in the family system. These roles in a way contain, are used to contain the display sadness. Please read my post, Display Sadness. One of the, these roles is the scapegoat or the identified patient. The identified patient within the family system absorbs the dis-ease within the family. The identified patient becomes the focus and the distraction. The identified patient or scapegoat invariably has to carry the shame of the disease within the family. Please read my post, Whose Shame Are You Carrying? Shame is different than guilt in that guilt can be resolved through making an amends, whereas shame is a being wound. The individual who experiences shame does not believe that they make mistakes, but instead that they are a mistake. Next paragraph. In the process of carrying the family shame, the individual unknowingly shackled is shackled to the shame created by the unspoken conflict, secret, or unresolved emotional pain. The identified patient is led to believe that they are the reason for the conflict within the family. Consequently, the identified uh, Patient develops a sense of responsibility for the conflict and in the process is led to believe that there is something inherently wrong with them. In response, the identified patient may act out the conflict through antisocial behavior or attempt to do more, to be more, to resolve the conflict. Grandiosity manifests through, the, through an overdeveloped sense of responsibility. Because the identified patient or scapegoat believes that they are the reason for the family con conflict. Debilitating shame keeps them trapped and enrolled. Overcompensation becomes a way of life for the identified patient as they attempt to resolve the conflict. 
In my experience, I was placed in the role of an identified patient at a very early age. In the process, I embraced an overdeveloped sense of responsibility in my attempt to do, do more, to be more. Instead of being, I became a doing. I believe that I was, uh, uh, if I was more than, then I could avoid my inherent sense of shame for not being enough or doing enough. I also believe that if other people were irritable, restless, or discontent, I had somehow, uh, I had to somehow make them okay so that we could be okay, so that I could be okay with myself. In my attempt, in my attempt to anticipate what was expected of me, I spent considerable time people pleasing, approval seeking, and mind reading. None of these strategies proved to be effective, but only reinforced my sense of inadequacy and self-contempt. Nevertheless, I still strove to be perfect in my attempt to resolve the family conflict. Self-loathing distracted and perpetuated my grandiose sense of responsibility. As I have mentioned uh, in previous posts, I was in a motor vehicle accident in 1967 at the age of 10. I sustained an open skull fracture with right frontal lobe damage, a severe brain condition with brainstem involvement. Denial of my injury became a familiar component within the family because I was able to teach myself with the encouragement of my mom and other family members how to walk, talk, read, write, and speak in complete sentences. Although I uh, acquired uh, I acquired a real disability, the invisible nature of my traumatic brain injury placed my disability uh, placed my disability in an all too familiar mindset. If we cannot see the disability, no disability exists. Nevertheless, the impact of my traumatic brain injury presented me with cognitive psych and social deficits and limitations. My previously assigned role as an identified patient in the process took a new meaning. I appreciate you listening to this particular presentation, my friend. I believe that the information can help anyone, whether they have a traumatic brain injury, acquired brain injury, or some other type of adversity in their life. If you're being made to be the identified patient within your family system, then you are being bullied overtly, maybe covertly. Realize that you're not the problem, my friend. You're part of the solution. All you can do is be responsible for you and what you do. And if you believe that you need to make amends, make amends and then let it go. We're not responsible for fixing other people. If they're irritable, restless, and discontent, they need to resolve those issues. I'll say so long for now. I'll t share part two of the uh, series tomorrow or in the next couple days. Thank you for your time, and God bless both you and your family. Have a great afternoon, and God bless you.